Hello, everyone. I'm Denton Davidson, senior editor for Gold Derby, here with two-time Oscar winner, Kazuhiro, who is now an Emmy nominee for the best prosthetic makeup for the Stars Limited series, Gaslits. Um, so, Kazu, I, I mentioned you won two Oscars in 2020 for Bombshell and in 2018 for Darkest Hour. So how does it feel to now be an Emmy nominee and embraced by the TV Academy as well? <laughs> it's it's a great honor, you know, because uh, uh, it's it was rare to work on TV shows. And uh, I had some opportunity in the past, but uh, you know, this time, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a great honor and nominated for this show because it, it was great to work with the show and uh, in the, such a great show. Too. What were you doing that morning the nominations came out? You know, what, what do you remember about hearing the news and, and who told you? Oh, uh, what was it? Oh, uh, I was working with uh, Richard Richardson, uh, he, he's a co-nominee, and he applied makeup on set and he texted me, uh, uh, we are nominated. So that, that's how I knew. <laughs> yeah, I was on set working on uh, the movie called My Show. And uh, it, it was a quite busy time. So uh, it's kind of gradually sinking afterwards. So. <laughs> And is there something you look forward to the most about attending award shows? Like when you when you're up for something like that, do you get nervous or is it exciting? Or are there people you like to meet when you're there? Or how does the, the night go for you? You know, I I I never attended like an Emmy Awards. And uh, I heard there will be so many people because it's a you know technical award and uh, it's a great to see all uh other nominees because yeah. It's quite different because other uh, awards are uh, like a limited in the category and a small amount group of each, uh, you know, professional, and so it's quite different. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to see many friends, like uh, you know, they, because some of my friends are uh, multiple nominated for the other shows too. So yeah, that would be great. And your focus in this series is specifically on Sean Penn and transforming him into John Mitchell, President Nixon's Attorney General. And I'm curious, you know, how were you recruited for this series? How did you how did you end up with this job? And what made you want to right. take? Yes. Uh, so, you know, I I uh, actually uh, Sean uh, Sean Penn uh, contacted me for a while maybe last few years and we were trying to figure out how you know how we can work together and there's a, some shows he wanted to he wanted me to work on it but the schedule conflict and it never happened until this time and so Sean contacted me about the gaslight and uh, so he's supposed to be uh Joe Mitchell in the story so and uh, it was a good timing even like a, it was during a pandemic, it was and either like a right after pandemic start, like a first big pandemic, and we got so busy, you know, because because everybody started to make shows, and uh, but I was in a busy schedule too, but I couldn't say no to him because I wanted to work with with him for a long time, so that's why I said yes to him. To take this job. What is the biggest difference for you when you're working on a real life character versus a fictional character? Uh right. I I like to work on a real life character because it's a really challenging because especially like a famous uh cross the current time people, because everybody knows what they look like. And everybody knows what, for example, like a Sean Penn look like. So, yeah. um, the not the fooling audience, but uh, in ha it's very hard to make the makeup look believable and uh, at the same time convincing as this person. And of course, you know, with that actor, makeup doesn't work. You know, like a Sean, amazing actor, so he he pulled off that the look and also mannerism and everything, it had to go with it. But, uh, you know, like a, like a 
if made up character is easy because it can be any anything you know? because yeah. yeah because there's so many restriction happens if i we have to make someone look like someone you know of course like a proportion is different uh the position of the eyes and nose and mouth is different so we have to figure uh what would be the best way to change the face and uh, you know like hairlines and hairstyle also affect the whole look too and the body shape too so everything has to be come together and and then at the same time the makeup has to be workable uh you know we can uh, pile up stuff on actor's face and uh, it, it will restrict uh, actor's movement or expressions so we have to really figure out uh and what try uh figure out what not to do too you know so and also considering the makeup time uh, application time on set too because actor have to walk afterwards you know so many hours you know because basically like a prosthetic makeup usually takes like two to three hours for to apply it and then so that means we have to start the makeup like a four or five in the morning to wow. you know be ready for the uh uh crew call you know so that's that's the tough part and uh make it believable and then make it invisible is a is a really hard to do do you start with like a do you build like sort of a, a shell or something that you reapply every day or is it fresh every day? Like, oh, right. The, so basically how I started is uh, I, I've been using a 3D scanners uh, to uh, used to be uh, like a silicon arginate uh, to put on the actor's face and make an impression of the actors. And now you're using a 3D, 3D scanner and then I will print out uh, actor's face in a 3D printer and mold that and cast in the plaster and uh, on that plaster cast uh, we will you know I usually use a clay to sculpt a new character on top of that and after sculpture is done make a mold of those pieces then cast a silicone inside and uh, that's the actual prototype we apply on actors and that alone takes three to four hours just to apply that to the actor? Yes, it uh, depends. Uh, like if it's simple, like if it's just nose, it can be done like an hour or an hour and a half. But if there's a more coverage or more elements to put on, uh, it will be longer to apply. And he's got a double chin, the hair, like his head, he's bald. I mean, he looks completely different. I didn't even recognize him until, because I watched the show and I didn't, read anything before watching it i like mm -hmm. to like i like to not know if i'm going to watch something it's it's more fun for me mm -hmm. to go in and i didn't recognize him until like 15 minutes in i knew he was in it and then i i, I could see his eyes and i'm like oh mm -hmm. that's sean penn yeah. um because you really don't see the makeup so is that something that has makeup improved over time or have makeup artists improved over time uh, or so both okay it's like because we used to use a, a foam latex, like a like a white sponge, uh, you know, like uh, like almost like a sponge, makeup sponge, and put on because those are opaque, and uh, your skin has a translucency, and we change the material to the silicone, and uh, it's much softer and move like a skin, but still has a limitation because we basically you know like a human human face for example like uh there's a skull and the muscle and the skin on top of it and the muscle will drive the skin to move and that will make it expression and then we are building another part of the face on top of that and it, of course it won't move like a real skin so we have to figure out uh, where to end the piece and what to put on and so and they also the you know, like a technology advanced and also the way we think about the makeup changed a lot. And, uh, you know, of course we have to, we have a responsibility to make everything better. So uh, used to be like a simple sculpture with, uh, we call the texture stamp, which is basically made from uh, uh, peel, peel of, uh, like orange peel, like a bumps, and push that to the clay. But now we cannot do that. You know, we use a 
uh, sculpting tool to make uh, each pores and the ring pores on the surface. So it can withstand the uh, HD camera or whatever the camera they use that, you know, like a capture so many details. So, and then also sculpting skill too, like uh, we, I think we changed a lot too. So everything like really progressed, uh, improved and advanced and during like the last 20, 30 years. The episode singled out was actually, was the finale and it was called Final Days. That's mm -hmm. what the nomination is for. What is special about this episode for you and, and why do you think it best represents your work? <laughs> so, I was, you know, it's, it was hard because every episode, there was a great part of it. And uh, basically, I wanted to include as many people as possible. So the whoever involved in this show. And so that was an episode that had a lots of uh, basically. Oh, so, if you, so if you get nominated, that'll be the most people nominated. Is that what? Yes, you're... yes, that oh. was the reason. Yeah, basically. Of course, it was a great episode too. But at the same time, uh, you know, I want to I want to be fair to everybody who walked on, and uh, also uh, you know Vincent Van Dyke uh, designed that. Uh, what I did wrong. Um, there's another character uh, in it, and so I wanted to include everybody. And uh, and during the filming, uh, there was a COVID restriction happen, so we had to we had to do uh, we, we had we had to go through the hiatus, and uh, and we lost the two makeup artists, and the new new makeup artist started to apply the makeup on the set. So you know that that was an episode that had enough hours. For both of them, both all of them walked on. So that was the reason. Um, there's some physical things that happen in the series. And mm -hmm. I'm curious, you know, what that was like for you um, watching. Like there's a scene where Julie Roberts slaps him across the face. Mm -hmm. Are you thinking, like, don't rip his nose off? How fragile is how fragile is the makeup? <laughs> on there? It's pretty pretty fragile. Uh, like, you know, they shouldn't be. Taking a nap, you know, face down, of course, you know, that will be horrible. Uh, but, you know, just, you know, basically, we can ask actor to take it easy, whatever they have to do, you know, uh, because the most important thing is that, uh, telling a story and for them to do what they need to do, rather than try to be, uh, you know, uh <laughs> make it less than they are doing uh so uh pull back what they're doing and so you know just uh of course we warned the like, director and ad okay this maybe we should put this in the last shot in in the day so whatever happens happens but we can so we don't have to film with the broken nose in the rest of the filming, you know, that day, you know, so th that's that kind of thing going goes into the whole scheduling and everything. So yeah, that's you know, that's uh, the slap. <laughs> it was it's really she slapped his face really strong. So, <laughs> but it, yeah, it was okay. Yeah, and you've had such an amazing career. I mentioned two Oscars. So yes. I'm curious to know what made you want to get started in this, in this business? How did you, how did you become a, a makeup artist to begin yes. with? And, you know, how did, how did it take you from, you know, Japan to Hollywood? Oh, I see. Um, the, so at the, uh, the biggest inspiration was um, Star Wars when I was a kid. I, I was watching and also dual uh, you know, Steven Spielberg directed. And those movies, I really liked it. And also, uh, the reason why I had in interest in the film job was uh, special effects in the film. And, and I hated the school. And I was looking for a reason to get out. <laughs> and then how to get out from the school as soon as possible. And so, okay, that, that means I have to find a, my uh, profession and the career. 
So I was trying many different things in the special effects, like a, you know, shooting a eight millimeter camera with a miniature I made and I made a like a you know kind of stupid it's like a small movies and uh, stop motion and everything like a, all category I basically tried and but I didn't try a special effects makeup because I hated a horror film when I was a kid and I didn't have interest because you know like uh just it wasn't for me so special effects makeup is basically connected to the horror film and that I thought that was the only you know made for and then uh I think like a last year in high school I found a magazine called Fangoria and there's an article about Dick Smith doing uh, makeup on Hal Holbrook as a, to turn him into the Abraham Lincoln. And I look at the picture and I was, okay, this is something I really want to do, you know. And uh, it's so interesting and uh, amazing. And I couldn't figure out, even like there's a picture of the process, I couldn't figure out well, how did he do this, you know. <laughs> so um then i started to have an interest and i found out that, about the rick baker and uh, he's my also my hero at that time too and so okay this is something i should do and uh, i did the research and i started to do makeup on myself and i found a p.o box of dick smith on the back of a magazine and i sent him a letter and he wrote me back right away and so basically he said, uh, I, I, I wrote to him, what would be the best way to learn and to become a professional makeup artist? And he, he replied to me, uh, okay, there's no good school in the United States even right, right now. So uh, best way to do is uh, do the makeup yourself, like a, learn yourself. And whenever you come up with the makeup, just send me a picture and I can give you a comment. And that was the starting of a relationship. And then uh, the, uh, so the year he, uh, the year I graduated high school, uh, Dick Smith was supervising Japanese film. And uh, so he kind of uh, invited me to be a, one of the group. And that was the start of uh, my profession. Then, uh, you know, it, it's a Japanese film at that time, they didn't have any budget or money. And so I couldn't do in a way I wanted to do, which is like a basically like a Hollywood way. And so I was fig figuring out how can I move to the United States? And I was trying many things, you know, like I try to find a sponsor and uh, there's a lottery for a visa, no green card green card and but nothing happened and finally uh I told to my friend who was working at Rick Baker's shop at that moment and so Rick knew about me through Dick Smith and they're from other makeup artists and so he decided to hire me uh for Men in Black the first Men in Black and that was how I came to this country wow yeah what a great story um, <laughs> Kazuhiro, best of luck at this year's Emmy Awards. To our viewers, head over to goldderby.com, make your Emmy predictions, and check out more interviews with this year's Emmy nominees. Kazu, thanks again for taking some time to talk with Gold Derby today. Thank you very much.